Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, Gary Shaw Productions, in association with Square Ring, Holden Promotions, and the Mandalay Bay, are proud to present boxing at its best from the Mandalay Bay. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is John Bailey. Right now, boxing fans, we head into the action with our first bout, a special four-round featherweight attraction. The three judges scoring this bout will be Dwayne Ford, Bill Graham, and Jerry Roth. And your referee in charge is the fair but firm Joe Cortez. Introducing first, he fights out of the blue corner, and he weighed in at 123 pounds. Tonight he's wearing the blue trunks, originally from Mexico City, Mexico. He now lives and fights out of Los Angeles, California. His professional record stands at three wins with ten defeats, two draws, one win by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Luis de la Rosa. And his opponent, he fights out of the red corner. He weighed in at 126 pounds. He's wearing the red trunks with blue and white trim. He is from Ponce, Puerto Rico, and he now fights out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He has a perfect professional record consisting of six wins, four wins by knockout. Introducing the undefeated Mario, the Ponce Santiago. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. They only have regular the door Camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Quiero una pelea limpia, okay? Chocos a la mano. Fuerte. All right, so it's said to go with that first fight. This is in the featherweight division. Santiago had his professional debut in April of 01, scoring a first-round knockout over Antonio Martinez. He only fought once in 02, no fights in 03, and now he's serious. This is his third fight this year, Tony. Both guys are not uh, sweating at all. I guess they're going to get warmed up in the round. As you can see, Santiago in the red, white, and blue is a southpaw, and he's stalking his man. And there you see... Uh, De La Rosa just switched over to softball. Well, let's see how it unfolds down. Now, back fighting as a right-handed fighter is De La Rosa. De La Rosa in the blue trunks. Santiago fighting in the trunks uh, with the kind of the Puerto Rican flag with the red, white, and blue uh, trim on it. A couple of times, uh, De La Rosa's kind of come in, bent down, and dropped his right hand as he did it. Not good, especially if uh, Santiago can throw a straight left. Well, he's got four knockouts in his six wins, but he had an extensive amateur career. And uh, De La Hoya is one of those uh, typical Mexican fighters that, uh, you know, hasn't had much management. He's had to take uh, anybody at any time. He's taken this fight on in one day's notice. So, you know, you can toss out the record of uh, three and ten with two draws because I'm sure he's tougher than what the record indicates when you have to step up and fight on one day's notice. He doesn't look in bad shape, by the way, around the midsection. He's pretty cut for a guy that took the fight on one day's notice. No, he shot a nice little right hand underneath uh, to De La Rosa uh, but, uh, to uh, Santiago. Santiago's just trying to press the action, just coming behind that right jab of his straight punches right down the middle. Yeah, the right jab is successful there. He lets the right go again. The nice stiff jab that time, and he does it perfectly. He drives off that back leg, steps up into his jab, nails him again with a jab, and back comes De La Rosa, but he misses. He falls short. This is round one action. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Tony Page. The principal's in there. Mario Santiago in the red, white, and blue, and the blue trunks is uh, Luis De La Rosa. De La Rosa, he, he's not moving his head. That's why he's getting popped with that jab. He backs up. He's going too far back, coming forward and walking right into that jab. He's bending up, bending his head a little bit further. Now I see him just on his pillow, trying to get away. Santiago having an uh, easy time nailing him with the right hand of the body underneath the left elbow of De La Rosa. De La Rosa tries to get off, but he can inside because Santiago's got fairly quick hands himself. Looks like if De La Rosa had an offensive game plan, went out the window. Now he's really survived for a while. He's getting, getting tattooed from a distance. He figured he might try and close the distance, go inside and fight, but he's happy to stay outside and get tattooed with that right there. Well, Tony, when you were looking at the tail of the tape there, you pointed out the height and reach advantage for Santiago, but folks, it's significant. It's seven and a half inches in advantage for Santiago in reach. And he's using it. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. He gets a jab there. The other problem is it's even more effective for him is that De La Rosa comes in with his shoulder squared up. So, I mean, he's getting a full seven and a half inches out of it. He's, uh, he's got to move his head a little bit. He's, he's got to go in and out, but he's going back and, and just letting, letting De La Rosa. He's Santiago just follow him around the ring. De La Rosa just needs to step around him or something. He's just... But he's going straight back. Yeah. Tony, and when you go straight back, you guy just has to take a shovel step forward and you get right back on top of him with that jab. 
and that's what he's doing. Closing seconds now in the first round. A good round for Mario Santiago. Takes the body shot in again. Cracks him with the left hand. Good shot at the end for Mario Santiago. And that's a nice, easy 10-9 round for Mario Santiago. Same way I had it. Santiago really has some nice body work in there. Well, so, uh, so the opening and took it. Yeah, Tony, in fairness again to uh, Luis De La Rosa, he came in here and said he'd take the fight, but that's been the, the, the whole situation in his career, the Santiago. You're coming back straight up. You're not thinking about getting hit back. You're not thinking about bringing your hands back. Very stumped. Under, over, step back, step back, step off. Okay? Let's start putting a little firepower in this guy, okay? But listen what I'm saying about getting pulling back. I mean, you're in hurt. First thing to do is for somebody to swing back very seriously. Okay, and you're just leaving your head lay there. Take a look. Early in the round, you see Santiago. Watch that right jab. Just waits, boom, right down the middle. Good defense, pulled away, got out of the way. Santiago has a nice jab. Watch him set it up. Round two. Down. Here's the end of the round. Just stalking. Nice little left, right hand. Little pulls out for the defense. Chops him with a quick, quick left. Ends the round with a good flurry. And you see Joe Cortez uh, right on the spot there. He's a great referee. Jumps right in there and yanks him out of there so no more punches land. This is round number two from the event center at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're glad that you can be with us wherever you're watching around the world. Japan, the Pacific Rim, down in Australia, New Zealand, across the Southeast Asia and India, across the Middle East and the Europe. We're glad that you're watching in a lot of countries in Africa with us tonight as well. We have time share in all the places, huh? <laughs> Well, I visit a lot of them. <laughs> Round two at San Diego in the red, white, and blue, sort of having things his way in the early good. Now, that time De La Rosa made a little feint off to the left and back to the right. If he's going to get out of there, that's the way to move. Yeah, but it was nice thing to try and throw a punch while he was doing that short start a little offense. He landed a nice right hand early against Santiago. Now he seems like he's picking up the offense, but Santiago's point is that he wants you to put some fire on the guy now. Let's see if Sonny Al can throw a one-two right down the middle. Well, the, the kid, uh, De La Rosa, is as tough as they come, but I mean, he can't do anything with this guy. I mean, the reach and height advantage is just so significant here. And the fact of the matter is, Sonny Al is a very well-schooled fighter. He's uh, spent most of his professional career actually fighting out of uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Reading a couple of times, but uh, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a, looks to me to be a very schooled fighter with a, a, an extensive amateur background. He did have uh, three fights in uh, his native Puerto Rico, his first three fights of his career, and then moved up to uh, Lancaster. I think Santiago spun him with a, with a quick left over the top. There's another popping jab. That jab point is a punch. You see the way that head bounced back yeah. this time. But again, De La Rosa just going straight back, so Santiago just shuffles forward yeah. and let's fly. And he watches him reset himself, come forward. He's working, walking right into his dad's power range. There's that one two I was talking about. I want to see Santiago try and just come right down the middle. But De La Rosa is leaving his hands a little bit wide. So Cortez, the referee says, keep him up to Santiago. Santiago wanted to come to the upper pad, trying to a little bit low with one shot on the inside there. Now he slides around to the left, bouncing forward. Santiago gives him some breathing. He tries to get him coming to him. He tries to time the left hand power shot. Of about 24 seconds to go in the second round. Santiago won the first round comfortably out of boxing. Hey, a pretty good wild right hand at time for De La Rosa. Just spun the head of Santiago, but it did no damage whatsoever. Santiago very much under control. Just trying to shorten that distance to get a good left hand lead right down the middle. Coming up in the closing seconds of round number two, a nice trip, easy 10 9 round again for Santiago with the Bellingham's round two. Well, another good round for Santiago. There you see him in the red, white, and blue. Just throwing punches, following his man. De La Rosa just on the ropes, trying to get out. Doing a good, good, good facets to his offense. Shots to the body, up to the head, back down to the body. He takes what's open, but he's just pounding away at the head right now. De La Rosa on the ropes, trying to get out of there. He's trying to fight off the ropes with a big right hand just to try and keep him off him. 
It's all Santiago right here. And there's a clinch by, by De La Rosa. Round three. Again, Santiago just keeping his distance. Look at the footwork. He adjusts his feet, shoots that right jab, trying to land the left. All right, back left. They got the event center in Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is round number three. Mario Santiago tracks of the flag of Puerto Rico in the blue trunks. Luis De La Rosa, the shorter guy who's giving away seven and a half inches of reach that has it going. Just pure grit. That's all he's got going for him right now. Santiago is all tuned up and uh, nicely warmed up. You mentioned that both of them came in very dry with no sweat. Uh, but they're both cool. Oh, yeah, a little, a little sweat there right now. But Santiago still, look, look, at, look at the ring general. So right in front of him, throwing punches and more angles. But they're landing. The De La Rosa just sitting there. And De La Rosa doesn't know enough to slide down and get out of there. to go and this is the third round. So when you look at the records, Tony, we both said, boy, how long is Taylor Rose going to hang in there? And he, oh, he's getting teed up. Look at these shots. And right up the ropes comes Taylor Rose. He's stopped. He's just waiting for that one chance to go with one counter right hand. But Johnny Abbott just smothered him with a lot of hard shots. Straight back. Love that chance. Coming forward, sets him up, loops out that right hand and falls short. That's not one of the few times he did fall short. And as De La Rosa tries to get up and shut him up, nothing clean lands by De La Rosa at all. De La Rosa looks like he's trying to just kind of change it with one shot. I don't think he has that kind of power. Tommy Allen's just taking his time and just picking up hard. Nothing else working for the shorter and guy giving away the seven and a half inches and reaching De La Rosa in the blue. Just nothing can work. And that's having a clipped almost uh, off balance that time. And De La Rosa fighting off the ropes. But uh, De La Rosa, he's got he's to land something, and he's not doing anything to keep Santiago off him. Santiago, wonder why do I have to hit this guy when he's dropping because I've hit him with everything that's in my arsenal. This is, this is when I, you know, when I say a typical Mexican fighter, that's with all full respect to the tough kids that have to take these fights on short notice. Big hard. You, know, you see a kid out of Mexico with, like, this kid, 3 and 10, or you see a guy fighting out of Connecticut with a 15 and 3. And, and, and the kid, you know, <laughs> the kid, the kid from uh, Mexico is probably going to give him a tough time. But this is a different case because Santiago is a polished uh, fighter that uh, had a lot of amateur fights and 6 and 0 is a professional and on his way. Barring something really unusual, hit it was the as the belt ends the third round. No, 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 Height. Another good round for Santiago. You see him on the right. He's just moving his footwork, getting himself into position. He's waiting for De La Rosa to bounce off the ropes, and he just digs to the head, digs to the body. Look at him trying to split the gloves on De La Rosa. Right there, De La Rosa has the gloves right next to his head, but he's still getting through. Back to the body, tees off on the ribs, back up to the top of the head. And there you see De La Rosa just, just trying to look for an opening. Later in the round, same Santiago. Power shot, power shot, body shot. Back to the head, back Ladies to the head. This will be the off. Final Ortiz round. Is looking to get in there. Good shot again. Double left, good, double left jab. Uh, good stuff. All right, here we go. Round number four. Mario Santiago and Luis De La Rosa. Santiago in the flag uh, of Puerto Rico colored trunks, the red, white, and blue. And the blue trunks with the white trim is Luis De La Rosa. Every round in my scorecard, and I assume Tony's as well, is in favor of Santiago. We have a shutout going 30-27 here. Yes, we do. But you probably don't need us to help to score that one because it's obvious that Santiago is just having a field day here. 
Well, maybe you should bring back the name Jose because uh, who's going to make it? <laughs> Fourth round action, but while we say that, we don't want to take anything away from him because he's some kind of tough and he did take this thing on short notice. And I'll tell you one thing, folks, and uh, you young fighters that are watching, you know when you get beaten up, it's very tough to hang in there. There was no quitting him. He knew if he didn't fight up the ropes in that last round that probably Joe Cortez would have stopped the fight, but he wouldn't have it. He came in. Bounding off the ropes after taking several clean shots, and you hear Tony describe in slow motion and by Santiago. And now Santiago just stays right on top of him, trying to catch him with the continued jab. Why isn't he throwing more left hands? Uh, I mean, he just doesn't really nail him with a real crisp left hand, down, a real booming shot. No, I was waiting for a one-two to bring the left down. No, he threw a couple of, of earlier, but uh, I don't think he planned himself. He just was throwing so many punches. You mentioned a good point about young fighters. A good thing for guys who are watching Santiago. Sometimes you just can't knock a guy out. So that means you better be in shape. And Santiago looks like he could go another six rounds. He's just in good shape, not sweating that much, but very much in control of that behind that right there. The occasional left. He's never been beyond four in his career. He did it once in 202 and once this year back in January. All the rest of his fights have been knockouts inside of two. So, and so Santiago just stepped back a little bit to get a little range to go in his body. Joe Cortez got over. He didn't get to throw any punches, but at least he's a smart kid at Santiago. Coming up to the one minute remaining mark. De La Rosa hasn't been down, not really shaken, although he's been peppered on several occasions during the course of the fight. The best situation was at the kind of the tail end of the third round where Santiago was just teeing off on him. And now De La Rosa just trying to avoid uh, getting hit by the heavy shot here. goes through the last 45 seconds of the fight. And boy, Santiago pounds him to the body. It's a good uppercut, too, Bob. He's just getting in there. I was wondering if he had an uppercut to drop it. There's another There it is. It's amazing how he splits the guard of the Taylor Rose. He keeps his hand up and still pops in the hands. He's right on top of him, and every time we think that uh, it's all over, all of a sudden Taylor Rose will come off the road. So again, while I'm impressed with Santiago's ability, and certainly not impressive with the knockout, he's doing a nice job back to the body, back upstairs. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two times in the fight, Joseph. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go. That's good. Closing seconds now of the fight, and a good fight for Mario Santiago. A nice finishing flurry is the way is the bell ending the fight. Well, a nice four rounds of work for Mario Santiago. And again for De La Rosa, if it looked like it was one-sided, it was. I mean, he probably, he must be in shape because he went the four rounds, but the, it was not his night, that's for sure, against a bigger, stronger guy. The funny thing is, Beckett goes to 3-11. He'll probably get more work just because he's tough, he's in there, he can't knock him out. Santiago really want to see him go up to the next level. I don't think he needs this type of opponent anymore. He's too slick, too well polished, as you said, good amateur background. Uh, he just controlled himself, but he didn't get rattled at all. I don't We'll take a look at this from the end of the fight. Uh, pretty good action coming up here. Santiago on the right again. Watch the footwork. Shift his body. Nice uppercut. There's that uppercut he's looking about. Look at the setup again. Again. Then he brings it over the top. Has his man against the ropes. Looks for that uppercut. If he has the opportunity, he'll take it. But Santiago, there he is. The one mistake he made. He squared up there, but De La, Hoya couldn't, uh, De La Rosa couldn't do anything with him. Santiago coming in. Faints. Coming behind the jab. Let's see if he does an uppercut. I keep saying De La Rosa. De La Rosa is a man who's trying, trying to be like De La Hoya, but he's not that good at all. Tony, it was just, I was I was uh, just wondering which one of us would say <laughs> De La Hoya first in this one. <laughs> There's a lot on the line for De La Hoya in the next few months. Oh, yeah. But this is a guy by the name of Luis De La Rosa. We've got it 40-36 at ringside, but let's make it official with Jake Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of featherweight action, we'll go to the scorecards. All three judges scored about the same, 40 to 36. The winner by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated, Mario Ponce Santiago.